What you guys got another video? This powerful mini PC has a i9 Raptor Lake CPU. It's the i9-13900H. It also has 32 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of SSD NVMe storage. This is the specs on the back of the box. I'll go into more details about the specs that this mini PC can deliver. So this is exactly what you can expect to get inside the box. You're going to get your user manual here. This will give you all the instruction on how to set it up. If you want to use a VESA mount to mount it on the back of your monitor, you can do because that comes in the kit as well. You've got some mounting screws right here. You've got your HDMI cable and your wall mount here or VESA mount here for the back of your monitor. If you choose to mount this mini PC on the back of your monitor to save space, you do have that included. You get your power uh, brick here. This is for powering the actual uh, device. Output power is 120 watts, 19 volts, 6.32 amps. And the make is Moso, uh, if you're interested. So let's go ahead and take a look at the power cable. This is a three pin power cable for the UK here. And then we also get the mini PC itself. Now the color to me looks like a silver blue sort of color. And I do like the look of the uh, color scheme on this one. The power button is on the front. And we also have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on there. And we have two USB ports on there. These are 3.2 Gen 2 ports on the front. On one of the sides, we do have some ventilation and an SD card reader on that side there. So you should get plenty of ventilation inside here. On the other side, we have that Kenston lock. So you can lock it down. If you want to attach this to the back of your monitor, you could simply lock it into position. On the back, this is where mainly all the ports are. We have our two Type C ports on there and we also have two usb ports one 3.2 gen 2 port and also one usb 2.0 port two hdmi ports on there and we also have a power input and our ethernet port which is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and the ventilation for the actual exhaust of the mini pc on the bottom you have four screws which you can uh, undo to get access to the inside so you can do some upgrades and as you can see there we do have room for some upgrades in here now this particular model does have that i9 processor in there. We also have a two terabyte Lexa drive in here. Also the memory on this one is dual channel DDR4, not DDR5, 3200 sodium, and it supports up to 64 gigabytes. Now on here, we do have the Lexa memory, as you can see. Now this particular processor does support DDR5, but they've gone with the DDR4 route which will obviously impact performance a little bit, but it obviously will keep the cost down for them. But there's the specs of the actual RAM itself. Now you probably noticed there was a 2242 M.2 SATA uh, drive bay here, which you can put in there. There's also uh, another drive here, which is your two terabyte drive, which I've mentioned. And inside here, you can also put an SSD inside here, up to two terabytes of storage on there as well. Now, if you populate all of the storage options you have available on this system, you could have up to five terabytes of storage on here, which is quite amazing for a little mini PC. So this is the version I'm running here, which is the i9 version. And you can see it's the mini IT13, which stands for 13th gen. There is some i5s, i7s on here as well. If you're interested in those, you can use the links in the video description. Basically, this is a super powerful mini PC. If you're looking for something that can do quite a bit, it does have Wi-Fi 6E on here and Bluetooth 5.2, but the i9-13900H has 14 cores and 20 threads with 20 megabytes of cache and up to 5.4 gigahertz on uh, boost speeds. So it's a pretty decent, it's one of the first mini PCs to support the i9 13th gen Raptor. CPU. So these are the idle temps here. It runs pretty quiet on idle, but once you start cranking this up, i.e., running Cinemension, other uh, taxing tasks like rendering videos or playing games, the fan does kick in and it does get a bit loud, but that's to be expected on a mini PC when you're doing such uh, taxing tasks like I've just mentioned. But other than that, on quiet on idle mode, it's pretty good. So let's go ahead and run a CPU benchmark here. And these are the CPU benchmarks on Geekbench 6, 2,411 on the single core and 11,614 on the multi-core for the benchmarks using Geekbench uh, 6. 
So let's go ahead now and run uh, Geekbench 6 for the GPU to see what sort of GPU scores that we get for this particular mini PC. And there you can see 15,999 on the OpenCL score for uh, the Geekom Mini IT13. And that's for the GPU. I will be running other benchmarks on this so you can get an idea of how powerful this is and whether this is the right mini PC for you. So let's go ahead and run some benchmarks for the uh, NVMe drive here. You can see the sequential reads are 4,855.96 and the writes are 4,465.45 and that is an NVMe Gen 4 uh, drive in there. Now, some of them drives can go up to 7,000 reads and writes, but these ones are maxing out at what you see on the screen. So let's go ahead and do a Cinebench R23 here for you. I'll show you the thermals because I've got a funny suspicion that this will uh, get a bit toasty with Cinebench because it always does with these mini PCs because it pretty much tortures them. And you can see here the thermals do start to creep up a little bit and start going red. And we do hit that core distance for the TJ Maxx there on 4 Celsius and we can see there 96 Celsius on the core temps there as well. We are suffering with a core power limit exceeded and I'll give you the scores right now as you'll see on the screen. There they are, 12,835. Now these scores can be improved if you could add more watts to the CPU. For instance, the TDP max on this is 45 watts, but this has been capped at 35 watts and you can see here the intel core i9 raptor lake and you can see all the information there i'll run a quick uh, benchmark on here as well so you can see it happens on the cpu z uh, benchmark as well so let me go ahead and run a quick stress test for the cpu right here and uh, you'll see straight away it will start to uh, go into the red here and, uh, and that's because the i9 is quite a powerful processor in a 4x4 uh, mini chassis and it's going to be difficult to keep that cool so you can see here we're already hitting the uh, package ring thermal throttle in yes and we're also hitting the core thermal throttle in yes and it's saying it right there with 100 celsius so you can't undervolt this unit either because it's been locked down in the bios and i'll show you that in a second and there's nothing you can do about it if you go to the bios it's pretty uh, basic there's not a lot going on inside the bios you can see here all the specifications are here but you can't do anything with them there's no uh, setting in here that allows you to uh, undervolt or do anything and with that being bios locked like this you won't be able to tamper with it inside here so you are locked at 35 uh, watts now you can use uh, intel's extreme tuning utility if you wanted to and give it more wattage if you wanted to. It will allow you to give it more wattage, but it's not advisable on a little mini unit like this with that sort of cooling, because if it's having issues at 35 watts, it's certainly going to have more issues at 45 watts. So it's not advisable to add more uh, watts, because you won't be able to undervolt it because it's locked. And you can see here the uh, night raid score here is 18,842, and that's for the GPU here. Some people like to see the night raid score, and that's based on your GPU. Now, we'll do some gaming tests there for you so you'll be able to see. And again, you will be able to use this for a Plex server, or you'll be able to use it for rendering videos and things like that. It will be able to handle all these things. And you can see the Time Spy score is 1914. So let's do some video playback so you can see that in action. So we're going to do the jellyfish playback here. That's 120 Mbps. And you can see this is Ultra HD uh, HEVC 10 bit. And you can see it's having no trouble playing that file whatsoever. You can even skip it. It's so powerful it can handle this no problem. And we'll do this one here, which is a very difficult one to play on a lot of mini PCs. So we'll go ahead and give this a run as well. And this is the 400 Mbps, 4K Ultra HD, HEVC, 10 bit. And you can see you can skip this one as well, having no problems playing back this sort of quality of video. Uh, and I'll also do some streaming here at 4K. And you can see the uh, stats for nerds here. And I'll do a skip here. And uh, we have nine drop frames. That was at the very start. And there's no more drop frames, as you would expect, with a processor of this power. So again, great for. 
you know, streaming movies or playing 4K movies or any of that sort of stuff, running it as a Plex server, it'll be great for that. Or maybe you want to do some gaming on here, you can do. You can do retro gaming or you can do uh, some sort of uh, low-level 720p gaming. I wouldn't advise you to be gaming on a mini PC at 1080p. It's not going to replace your gaming desktop at 1080p playing at high frame rates. It's not going to do that. This is a mini PC, uh, but it will play, as I've said, games at pretty decent frame rates, and you should get some nice, smooth gameplay here. But just be realistic. It is a mini PC at the end of the day, and again, it can do a lot of things a normal desktop can do. You can run Linux on here. You can run Windows on here if you want to. Uh, you can turn it into a Hackintosh if you want to. You can do whatever you like uh, with your mini PC. It do quite a lot of uh, stuff. Again, if you want to do some video editing, it will pre probably handle that with that i9 processor in there and 32 gigabytes of RAM. It should be no problems uh, whatsoever handling those sort of tasks. Now, it's impossible to test every single game, but if you are playing a certain type of game, you may need to uh, adjust the graphics settings and adjust the settings for that particular game to make it play a little bit smoother. Some games you might have to drop down to 720p, and some games you can play at 1080p like we're doing right here. A little bit of tearing at the bottom of the screen, but that's to be expected for this particular type of game. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. So that is the review of the Geekon Mini IT13. If you're interested, I'll leave all the links and information in the video description. My name is Ben Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.